Just ready. Um, let's move a little closer here. <laughs> okay, peanut gallery. All right. And Chris, Chris Hart is our president for any new beekeepers or whatever. And he's a card. So, <laughs> so he's a joker. He likes to joke around. And there's Carly Faye Hansen. Hi, Carly. You look very pumpkin-y. You, actually, you both do. You, but, you're very fall today. Yes. <laughs> I, I got raven colors on, so you know what my illusions are. <laughs> yep. So, all right. So we're going to sort of peek in on Brian and see what he's doing and let him explain how these darn things are put together. Okay. And this is a quilt cool box. This is for wintertime um, keeping bees warm and cozy and dry, basically dry. Yeah, it just absorbs the moisture. Um, you know, bees naturally are tired throughout the winter and it has moisture in their breath and then um, that collects on the lid of the hive uh -huh. and then it will freeze and frost and then once we have a warm day That'll um, drip down onto the cluster of bees, and then the bees that being wet, it's tough for them to stay warm, so they will freeze to death. A lot of people say they will starve because they're frozen and can't move. So, right. You know. Well, wet bees are dead way, beds. They die. Yeah. Yeah. Starve, freeze, whatever. Right. They're dead. So this is a way to absorb that moisture and when you look in the hive in the winter the top of the you put cedar or pine shavings on top in the top of it mm -hmm. the cold side all the moisture will condensate onto that and it'll be a layer of frost on the top and we'll drill vent holes into the sides and then um, that airflow allows the chips to stay dry mm -hmm. kind of like an attic yeah. You know, you got your vents up there and your insulation. And See, now that's what I should have known. I did my quilt box last year, and I did not provide vent holes. Didn't think about the attic um, reference. But uh, I went, and I just, I missed seeing my bees anyway. So I would go, and as someone on Facebook said, you know, go fluff my, fluff my bees. I fluff. I was fluffing my, my cedar chips to, you know, sort of move the moisture, you know, and just sort of keep them dry a little bit. Uh -huh. But they made it through the winter. They were fine, and it was a, it was a good thing. So I will add vent holes this year into my uh, into my quilt box. This is what Bonnie and I were just talking about. There are so many different ways of doing things. There's nothing that's absolutely wrong per se, but some things work a lot better than others, and it's great to hear different thoughts from different people so oh, yeah and even then i try to do at least one thing different every year just try something else you know oh that's new. good advice and yeah so don't don't do it on every one of my hives either that's the other thing right you know oh, that's also good advice yeah, if it goes really badly you don't want it to do really badly to right. all your hives right all right you do it with half of them a quarter <laughs> yeah test group the, the test group right if it goes well then yeah do whatever you do. yeah yeah so right now, um, if the bees are still taking it, we should be giving them two to one sugar, which is sugar water solution, um, which is theoretically two cups of sugar to one cup of water. Yeah. It's a very thick syrup. Um, my one hive stopped taking the sugar syrup, but the other one is going gangbusters. So, and they're right next to each other. So of course the one that's drinking it up is a smaller hive. So. You just never know with bees. Right. Maybe hive requirements are different. Yep. And you can have two hives right next to each other and not find the same patch of flowers. So yep. You just never know. That is so true. So you took, would you say this was originally a medium-sized box? Uh, yeah, more or less. More or less, okay. And then, let's see, I was actually work. you know, I'm always redoing things <laughs> right. in my mind I was going to make a basically a frame for the screen that would fit inside a medium for people that didn't want to buy the whole box right and then um, you know that way it would be kind of 
if you needed a super in a pinch, you could still just take the screen out and use it. Right. But I just didn't okay. have enough time to work that system out this right. year. Okay. But, you know, that's why we got the winter months. So yeah. So I can work on all this. Yeah. Okay. Right now I'm just putting the screen supports in because the chips are pretty heavy, so they, you know, right. I don't want them to um, sit down. Right. And if you look back on Facebook, a previous post that I made, I showed my box, my actual box um, from, that I used last year, and I was using my little fat fingers to sort of show the depth or whatever, but it, it, there's nothing set in stone, but you just have to allow enough room for um, a sugar cake or... Um, yeah, I do about an inch and a half. Inch and a half, yeah. So... If you're gonna, you know, that's enough. You know. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, I missed you. <laughs> but no, you're good. Alright, that's about all the supports I got. Okay. Alright. Wood shortages. <laughs> yeah. Wood. Good point. Closer again. Stay out of your way, but I'll be able to see. You know what? Let me do it this way. Okay, and this is window screen, and it's metal window screen, right? Yeah. Okay, you don't want to use the plastic stuff, right? Or does it matter? It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Okay. I just feel like this is a little more um, sturdy. Sturdy, yeah. So I've been using that. Okay. So now, put it this way, you can usually get two per thing. Okay. And Brian is a, is a carpenter, um, so, I mean, he has all these tools, but, you, you know, you, you can use regular scissors, expect them to go dull, if you don't have those big, you know, cutter things. Oh, yeah, you can use a utility knife. Utility knife, same thing, yep. And the staple gun, most people have a staple gun, or you can use a stapler, you know, just something to tack the, the screen on to the board. And that's just basically for support, because the uh, wood chips do get heavy, like he said. And that shim is will go on the underside so that the sugar brick or the fondant or whatever you use to feed the bees in the wintertime is between the top of the hot, uh, frames and the bottom of the wood chips, correct? You actually leave the inner cover on there, too. Okay, so you have the... I do the whole hive, inner cover, and then I put the quilt, and then I put the lid. Okay. I okay. just find that way it's easier, so if you... If you still have your sugar brick there, you can sneak in and you're not going to have bees in your face. Ah, okay, okay. So once they chew through that sugar brick, then you can say, okay, and you can just push that one off to the side and put a new one in. Okay, and you put the sugar brick right on top of the hole of yeah. the inner cover. Yeah. Okay, all right, good. Because I feel like the, the moisture from their breath gets absorbed into the sugar brick and it helps to soften it so the bees can eat it. Right. So it's like dual purpose. Okay, good. That's good to know. Yeah, all right, so like right now, this is upside down just so that you can get a visual of how this goes. Jude, flip that, flip that around just so like you, you, you were putting it on top of your hive. <laughs> Vanna White. <laughs> put this down? Yes, put that down. That's your height. Cause, and that, that would go on top of your inner cover and then that would go on top of the shim, the feeding shim, and then you put the wood chips in the box right there where, above the screen. And I have a question for Brian because last year by mistake I put my brick here. I did too. 
And then I put this on top. I did too. And then the inner cover. I did too. And then the outer cover. I did too. And it it did. Mine did, too. So, but he know, just explained why, you know, again, here here we go. Different beekeepers do it different ways, and you can dry it a different way. Last year, Jude and I both did it the same way. We kept the inner cover above the wood chips and had and had the sugar brick right on top of the frames. And why shouldn't they do that? <laughs> um, so that they don't fly out at you. I didn't have that problem, you know, if you're checking on it or whatever. Okay. But, I mean, it, we... Maybe I'll try it. I'll try it Brian's way this year, and we'll see if it works. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Love you, Brian. Love Thank you for too. all your work. <laughs> no problem. What else would I do? You know. That's right. Get around, getting in trouble. <laughs> Go canoeing or kayaking. Oh man, that'll be later. Yeah. <laughs> that'll be later. Now what are you doing? Yeah. I'm fixing the. Oh. Okay. The yeah. Oh, well, that makes sense. So it wouldn't slide around. Hi, Pops. You going to come say hello to me? Mm? You barked in there. Sugar bricks. And, and if you, you know, if the screen gets damaged, it's easy to unscrew and ah, place the screen and okay. put it right back on. Yep. And you know this man's a Oh, yeah. <laughs> Double barrel drills. I saw that thing you're building. The treehouse? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, what else am I going to do? Hey. Get outside. Now I can get outside, build some stuff. <laughs> so, do you feed your bees sugar bricks? What do you do? I, you try different things, different years, so. They're the easiest. Yeah, I like the sugar bricks. Um, and I just use two tablespoons of water with one cup of sugar and mix it up. And some people add stuff to it. I don't because in the spring, if you still have sugar bricks left, you can put them in water and dissolve them and make, like, <gasps> you know, one-to-one -one syrup if you want. Well, you I have a so question. The bees. Yes. I have a question. I made too much two-to-one syrup. Now, as soon as I had it made, they stopped taking it. So I have all this two to one syrup can can i do something with that to make it sugar again or should I just I save it i mean you, i guess you could add it to the sugar to make sugar bricks yeah okay but. so in the winter now in the Oh, bring it up here to feed the bees. Well, that's it. I can bring it up here and feed the bees. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Bring it out of the jar. <laughs> <laughs> right now, okay. am I doing two to one? Or two, one? two to one. Okay. Two to one. In the spring, we do one to two. One, no, one to one. One to one. 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 So if you add double your water, then you'll be doing the spring. Oh, that's okay. true. That's, that's well. true. Thank you, Bonnie, the teacher. Our, our, new, our newbie beekeeper, who's a science teacher, just said add... Double the sugar. So, in other words, add another g glop of water, and you have one to one for the spring. <laughs> there you go. So, you yeah. like my technical science terms here? Glop of water. Glop of water. <laughs> it's better than a doohickey of water. Or glop. <laughs> glop. <laughs> How much is a glop? <laughs> it's it's equal to the first glop. Yeah. <laughs> Two doohickeys. <laughs> <laughs> See, you learn so much here in the nuke yard. You know, yeah, it's fun. just yes. <laughs> that is not take yourself serious. That's right, exactly. It's a bunch of bugs in a box. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> and they're in a box, and they're looking at us and saying, "What is she doing now? Yeah. What? Just can, can you just leave us alone for five seconds here?" <laughs> I have a, a friend that I help with herbies in the city, and um, we go in those, that hive maybe like five times a year, and uh -huh. they are so good. Are they? They are the best bees. I mean, just yeah, pussy cats, huh? They just keep doing their thing, and I just think this is a right. candidate for don't mess with them. All right. <laughs> so you're gonna have us help you with these boxes? Yeah. You want to grab a I mean, stapler? we may as well do an assembly line instead of standing here and watching you do all the work. We can pop. Are you doing? You're doing this backwards from the way you 
But yeah, you're starting from that pile. You're not pulling from this pile, are you? Or it doesn't no, make a difference. Pile. Oh, you are. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's just like I said. I got them all numbered because okay. once oh, wow. I like to put them together yeah. as one piece and then take and then cut them because the oh, they all line sense. up. They better. fit. Right. Yeah, they right. Fit. <laughs> this is where they came from. Right. If it's slightly off, it'll fit. It yeah. We didn't do that the first year, and we had some. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> I might have a feeling. I actually am running into that problem because I just bought, I bought a top feeder. So I went to the Ziploc bags with holes to feed the sugar, and I bought a top feeder. And I have one five, and I have one regular five, and my, one of my roots won't actually fit properly on there. There's just like, I'm talking like maybe a quarter of an inch difference. So uh. I've got like a small little gap in my little. Uh, right now. Yeah. yeah. So it is nice when they all line up. Yeah. <laughs> what do you want us to do? Uh, you can put screens on. So grab a box. I'm, I'm moving these over right now, so I can do the. Shims. Can it and we can do the I can. I can move. We can move the frames over here, and then I'll hand them to you. Right, I'll be well, useful in some form or fashion. You, yeah. Let me take the top three. I got this. You got it. Okay. You, got it. you got it. We got it. We got it. Come behind you, man. All right. Here. You just set them oh, on the ground. Great. So. Oh, okay. Ground. That'll be easier. Yep. All right. We're missing something here. Right. Okay. No, the, oh, it's one there. Yeah. yeah. One, two, three. Okay. There we go. Let's go to work. Okay. You want to do one? Yeah, I'm trying to think. What am I trying to say? Not glop. Um, wood shavings. Wood shavings. Then we'll put the wood shavings in, like after after Halloween, like first part of November. We'll put be putting the quilt boards on the um, hives. So for right now, they don't need to be on, and um, so that's that's what we're doing. And I'm going to end this here since we are almost finished. And we all want to thank you for joining us. We hope you will come to our meetings the first Tuesday of every month here at the Ag Center at 7 p.m. And if you're interested in coming to the board meetings, um, just email somebody and let them know and we can send you a, a link, to a Zoom link, because we do our board meetings by Zoom. Otherwise, we will see you soon. Have a good day and enjoy this lovely fall weather. <laughs>